The majority of us has been using XUnit for a long time, but the question is, why? It was 2007. I was at my IBM ThinkPad bulky laptop staring at Visual Studio 2005 when for the first time I created a test project. At the time we called it the Visual Studio Testing Framework, aka MES Test. But since then a long time went by and I eventually moved to a different testing framework. I played with NUnit for a few months, but eventually I land into XUnit and I have been using it since then. So this video got me thinking what I was thinking about when I decided to leave MES test. So many years after, it's really hard to recall the reasons for such decision. So it's hard to say. However, it turned out that it was the best decision for me. So in this video, I will revisit those three main testing frameworks on the .NET space. I will try to reconstruct why most of us eventually went to XUnit. I will explore the main differences between them and also, we will see what we should be using nowadays. So if you ask some developers that used to work with NUnit or MES tests, and then they left it to go to XUnit, and you ask them what they prefer in XUnit when compared to the previous framework, usually they will point to mainly two reasons, okay? Two of those reasons are the most common ones. And to show you them, I have here three projects with each one of those three testing frameworks, and I will show you the source code side by side. And as always, you can grab the source code as a patron. The first reason is quite simple to observe. When you simply create a new test project, and then you see the first test class that will be there. And here I have the three cases side by side. From left to right, you can see MES test, then N unit, then X unit. And from these three examples, you have a hint at what it is that I will mention. So on the MS test, you can see that now you need annotations for simple things like what is a test class. There's also an attribute that is a test method when you want to identify that a method works as a test. If you go to N unit, you will also have a hint or what is the thing that some don't like. That is, okay, we have the test, perfect. The name is better than test method, let's face it. Then you have here one thing that is the setup, okay? And this setup is a huge difference when compared to XUnit. So if we go now into XUnit on the right, you can still see an attribute here, okay? We don't avoid attributes at all. However, what you will see when using XUnit is that the use of attributes is not that common. As an example, the setup that you can see here is something that will happen naturally on XUnit through the constructor, and we'll eventually talk about that. So, this first reason is that many like the fact that XUnit invests on the nature of C Sharp in this case. So, if C Sharp as a concept for creating a class, let's use it instead of bringing a new method and adding it an attribute, for example. So this natural alignment with the language is something that many like. Now let's take a look into the argument number two, that is the one that I find the, the strongest one. One of the desirable properties of a good test is that tests should run in isolation. And that is the key for this second argument. But this time we will see that this is an argument when facing X units against N unit because MES test works in the same way as X unit. So I have here kind of like the same test, but you will realize that we need to do things slightly different. So my test class has a simple field with a stack, and then I have two test methods, okay? And on the N unit example, you can see that the first test will push an entry into there and then the second test will pop it. However, if I run exactly the same test, if I try to write the same test with, for example, XUnit, you will see that to succeed, I need to catch this exception. Why? The way that XUnit works is that you will have a fresh instance of the class per each test. So each test, each fact that you can see here, will run in isolation. In other words, the test runner will create a new instance of test execution, the name of this class, then we'll call this method, then we'll dispose it. Then we'll create another new instance of test execution, run the other test, and then dispose it as well. That means that when I run this second test, 
I don't have anything on the stack. While in the end unit version, I have it because end unit only creates one instance of that class and use both instances to run all the methods, all the tests. And in this aspect, MES test is exactly the same thing as XUnit. And this is one thing that we tend to like because of that reason, okay? We favor isolation. And why do we do that? Because we don't like flaky tests. We don't like the idea that when I'm writing a test, I need to think about the test execution harder, or I need to be concerned if this is impacting another test. And let me show you how that is impactful. So first let's run the tests and you can see that all of them are green. And now let's do the following. Let's go here to the end unit test and I will simply rename the test. So I will name the pop as A and the push as B. And I will do exactly the same to the X unit test. Run all those tests again. And this time you can see that X unit still green. So the, the tests were not impacted by renaming the test itself. While in the case of an unit, now I have one test failing and another one going green. Why? Because by the fact that I changed the name, I basically changed the order of execution. So this is one of those things that I don't want to be concerned when writing my tests. And that's one reason why many like to use XUnit. However, let me tell you that this is extremely important and you can see that XUnit was designed with this in mind. However, nowadays, you can change an unit to work this way. Oh, there's one attribute that you can define in your assembly of your tests, that is the fixture life cycle. And you can say that you want an instance per case, per test case. So to test that attribute, let's comment it again. Let's revert the test names. If we run the tests, everything is green. So perfect. Now what I want to show you is that if I remove this, now the order of the tests basically doesn't matter. So the test B will fail, will throw the same exception as the X unit version and the MS test version is throwing because now I don't reuse the same fields, the same instance of the class when I execute both tests. So if we run it again, now it should fail. Okay, so now I will, what I will need to do is changing this test to use the same approach as in the MES test or X unit. So let's comment that attribute again to have my tests green. But now you know if you have been using N unit, now you can shape it to work in the same way as X unit does. But that raises the question, how different are they? Is just those two details? Is that enough to decide which one should I use? And to answer that, first we need to revisit the story of them. So N unit is heavily inspired in J unit, the Java version. However, this doesn't mean that it is a port. It's not. In fact, N unit and J unit come from the same family of testing tools. And the cool thing is that the name of that family is X unit tools. But this X unit is not the other X unit. So there's one approach to testing frameworks that came from the work, I think in small talk by Kent Beck, uh, that defines this type of tools as X unit tools. And I believe that X on that name means X by anything, like you replace the X by a J because it's Java, you replace the X by an N because it's .NET, okay, you get it. So they come from the same family, so they have kind of like the same approaches. And I think that even nowadays, JUnit is the most popular testing framework in the Java space. So in .NET, we had an unit for a long time, and at the same time, Microsoft was working in MES test and they release it as part of Visual Studio 2005, following a practice that was common in Microsoft of releasing a tool to compete with the open source ones. The good news is that we don't have that Microsoft anymore. So Microsoft was working on a parallel thing that is MES test. But eventually, one of the authors of NUnit left the project and with a, a colleague, he starts the initiative of XUnit. And the goal was to try to design a new testing framework from a different perspective. So it could be inspired in the way that we write tests in NUnit, but the idea was to question the ways of doing it. The idea was to 
create a new approach that was more in line with the typical development experience in .NET. So we can say that XUnit is a tool that is based on an observation how an unit is built and questioning every single decision and trying to come up with a new way that has a, a design that will guide you in a given direction with small things like that that I just showed you moments ago. So now knowing the story of those three tools, what we know is that all of them come from the same place. They come from that XUnit family of tools for, that is heavily inspired on JUnit, let's confess. So knowing that, obviously we got to a place where they mostly are kind of like the same. They will change slightly on the approaches. The defaults will be different. The style of writing the tests might be slightly different, but fundamentally, they are not that different. And let me show you some of the differences so you know what we are talking about. Let's start by the assertions. And fundamentally on this chapter, what we can say is that MES test is in fact the one that is more limited and unit is a bit more advanced. They follow this approach of, for example, assert that something for ex equals to something that is something that usually reads better than the approach that we use with MES test or with XUnit. But what eventually happens in the industry is that we tend to not use the default assertions from our testing framework. Many of us are already using things like shouldly or fluent assertions, but some use that as an argument to keep using an unit. They don't want to install a different kind of thing to have better assertions. So this is one of the points where an unit goes a bit further than X unit in my opinion. One thing that many like on MES tests, let me just point that out, is that instead of asserting things like assert th throws a given exception, you can uh, create an expected exception as well. You can still do an assertion in this style. However, the, there's this option of defining an attribute that says, okay, I'm expecting this to happen. And many like that. That is something that, as far as I know, you don't have it in XUnit. And another example of how things are just slightly different is the way that you define, for example, parameterized tests. We could go into the multiple types of parameterized tests where you can use, for example, a class or load data from somewhere. All of them can, can do that in different ways. But what I wanted to show you is that usually the differences will be quite small and it's mostly about naming. For example, on MES test, you will call it a the data row while on, for example, an unit is a test case and while in X unit is inline data. So, and they do exactly the same things. But where we see the biggest difference is in fact in the life cycle of the execution of a test. Not only the fact that you create an instance per test, you, there's also this small detail of the setup and teardown of your tests. So in your setup and teardown, you usually define code that needs to arrange data for the test to execute. And while in XUnit here on the right, you can see that we use, for example, the constructor and also the dispose, so we implement the dispose interface right here, and that will lead us to implement the disposable method, right? So this is the way that we do it. It's following the same approaches that you do for all the rest of your c -sharp code in and unit, you will have this setup method that needs to have this attribute of setup. And for teardown, exactly the same thing. While in MS test, you have kind of like the same approach as an unit. This time we name it test initialize and test cleanup. And just to take this a bit further, what if this setup and this post needs to be on top of an asynchronous resource. For example, you want to set up the data of your database for integration testing. How can we do it on those three approaches? So if you need to do it on MS test, it's as simple as converting your setup method into an asynchronous method and you keep using the same attributes. You will do exactly the same on an unit as well, while in X unit, you need to implement the iosync lifetime, okay? That will basically enforce you to create this another method, okay? That is an initialize a sync, and also you have one dispose a sync. So on that case, it will run the constructor, then the initialize a sync, execute the test, dispose a sync. Another important thing to mention is that if you want to give the same behavior to XUnit 
as you have in any unit where you have one instance of the class for all your tests, you still can do it. You just need to bring a class fixture. If you have a class fixture, what will happen is that all of your tests will be executed with the same context data. The same thing that any unit does it by default. However, that is not the most common type of test that you will have for sure. So as you can see nowadays, they can do kind of like the same things. They do it in different ways. The defaults and conventions are different, likely in terms of feature parity. I will not say that it is 100%. Likely there's one extreme feature that you'll find out there, but that should be maybe the 5% of the framework that is different. But those usually are those edge cases that most of us don't, don't face it. Okay, now we know that most of us use XUnit. Now we know the most common reasons for that. But also we know that there's not a lot that will differ from those three technologies. So what should we be using? And let me share with you my opinion. So if you are using an unit and you have experience with an unit, just keep doing it. If you are coming to the industry or you are starting a new Greenfield project, you don't have a lot of experience writing tests and you want to pick one tool because you are not that familiar with the other ones, I will invite you to consider XUnit. Why? Because it's the most commonly used is the one that you have more information out there, but also you can see that even Microsoft nowadays uses XUnit for most of the projects that are public. For example, .NET itself has tests written with XUnit. But if you are using MES tests, here is where the decision might be tricky. If you have experience with MES tests, you have been using it for a long time. If you have a lot of tests written with MES tests and you are happy with it, just keep doing it. However, I would consider to start planning to adopt XUnit likely in new projects that you will do. And why do I say that? Not because I see MES tests being abandoned by Microsoft, but I can see a world where we start improving the tools and X units and N unit have an excellent experience and MES test doesn't have it. I can see new extensions popping up to improve the experience of those, but you don't have the same for MES test. When even Microsoft doesn't use MES test in everything, it's, I think it's useful to question if you shouldn't start thinking about in the long term to adopt a different technology. Not because MES test is, isn't capable, not because you have a problem with MES test, mostly because it's the opportunity cost in the future. And if you decide to move to XUnit and you want to get into it, or you are just starting and you want to learn a bit more, I have a complete playlist for you where I will dig into some of the most advanced features of XUnit and teach you some of the fundamentals.